Welcome back. In my last adventure, I was going to change this gear because I have all metal gears inside the head of the mill. And they assure me in the text on the little machine shop that this gear will break before the steel gears do. Well, I got news for you. Those are four of the six missing teeth off the low gear on the high low gear from the inside of the mill. These are the metal gear kit and they are not steel these are cast iron. Uh, they weren't machined when I put them in. They're not uh, machined faces. They're just right out of right out of the casting and put in put in their uh, raw and uh, they didn't do so well. I'm a little bit peeved. It's definitely not worth the sixty sixty dollars they're charging for that. It'd be worth about twenty on the open market. Sixty is out of the question for something that goes three years and comes apart just like the plastic did. And I figured this out when I put in the next plastic gear and it went bad right off the bat. So so much for the metal gear kit from Little Machine Shop. Don't buy it. Just get a belt drive. And don't get that cheap eighty dollar eighty dollar one on the on the uh, in eBay. If you look at it, it only runs high speed, and uh, you're going to want some torque on your mill sooner or later. You're going to want to run a drill over a quarter inch. That setup is fine if you're if you're doing CNC engraving, but not for general mill usage. So I decided to get rid of that and go with the belt drive kit. And I got the one from Little Machine Shop, and I'm not real happy with it because uh, my own stuff, I've never let anything out of my hands with a finish like that and edges like this. Now, that's a little sharp. I, I think I'll use it for my razor in the morning. And uh, the same thing with this, all the mill swirl and stuff. Yeah, they, they don't even they don't even lathe cut these things. These were done on a on a uh, CNC mill. Yeah, and I'm sure it does a fine job, but it doesn't leave a nice finish. Yeah, it's a little time should have been taken. And even this, this came out of the box dinged like this. I'm not happy. But uh, I'm not gonna wait any longer to use my mill. But I will make the uh setup that uh, Haas Machine had had uh, drawings for. Now this is the rest of it and again these are plenty sharp here uh, and it came with marks on the back so other things I'm not happy with it's too thin to use my uh, spring-loaded uh, spindle stop you get back to using this piece of junk. Not happy with that. That's one of the reasons why I'm going to use this one to make my make my own next one. Uh, I'm not real real pleased with this. I may reuse this, but then again, I might hold some sheet metal and make a real one. But the other thing, I would never. If I was if I was turning these out for for commercial use, I would have never used aluminum for something that you're going to constantly be loosening and tightening over over the over its use. And even at that, this wasn't finished. This is still the raw mill finish. That's that's just not satisfactory. And not for not for for uh, two hundred and sixty dollars, which is what this unit cost. Uh, it leaves a lot to be, be be desired. However, it was the only game in town that, that offered me some low speed, so that I will use. But on the other hand, when I go and make my own, I can make this thing bigger and achieve more torque with uh, less strain on the motor, because I routinely drill inch and a half holes and use boring bars and fly cutters and things like that that uh, there's a standard mill fare. I use an 80 mil, 80 mil shell, shell mill and I get nice finishes with it. Uh, I've shown it before. It's a little block running around here that I use for a test piece for feeds and speeds. And uh, it did a nice job on that. Let me 
give it a little wipe here. And it just runs around, but yeah, that's uh, does a nice job, and I like it. And I like to be able to use it. And uh, it came with these screws. Now I've heard before that uh, these screws are too long for the motor. I will figure that out as the installation goes. Also, I have left that intermediate gear in because it still has a high speed to it. Should the belt break, I still get a little high speed use out of my mill. But I did tighten up the uh, the shift lever on it, so it's so it's not going to move easy. And it comes with a belt, and I do suggest like with anything you you get with a belt, you always get a spare. So my next move will be to order a spare belt. And that's about it on that. And it's time for time to assemble this, and I'll get back to you when I get the parts over here. Thank you. Well, I guess you can take a nap now. I'll be back in a little bit. One of the first things that you're going to have to do is take off these four screws that hold the motor on. Now, like I say, I've heard that the new screws that are included with the kit may be a tad too long. And I will go into that when I get that far. I have taken the liberty of cracking these loose before I started just so I'm not wasting your time and to see if I might have needed an impact driver to get them to initially break because these have been on since this machine was new and that's about 12 years so I've never had this off before Ooh, dirty dirty 12 years worth but this is another thing I'm upset about. This kit is not thick enough to use this, but the one designed by Mr. Kemp is. In fact, he has one on the front of it. This is the spindle lock, spring-loaded. It's nice. I'd prefer to make a different block for this with in a, a little bigger knob and a plunger and a, uh, a roll pin and a groove with a uh, an L shape to it so you could push it in and lock it when you need both your hands for tooling. So this would this would have a uh, roll pin that would lean over and lock. So I might revise this thing in the future. You just got to be careful that you don't fire up your mill with a spindle locked. Now it'll just go into the default state, but still not something you want to do. Now you got this little clip on here. And because my eyesight is not the best in the world, I'm going to do this off camera, remove that, and I'm going to fight with it on my own. And you can fight with yours on your own too, so take a nap till I get back. And as my predecessors before me who have done this kit have, have stated, the uh, screws supplied with the kit are just a little bit long. So I'm going to put in the four screws I took out and get back to you. Also, when you take off the gear, take off the spacer. And that uh, clip I took out of there it got away from me. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, I found it. Here it is. So that, that comes off. That's a little it was easier to take a small pair of dikes to get that off than a screwdriver and, and uh, I didn't have a set of snap ring pliers small enough. Since you're not reusing it, it's no big deal, but you might want to save it for later, I don't know. Just in case, you never know. But I will put in the four screws and make sure, doggone it, that when you put this in, you uh, make sure that this points out to the, to the uh, left front like it did from the factory otherwise you will not have enough wire to complete this part of your project so I'm gonna put in the rest of the rest of the original screws and I'll be back so take a nap till I get back
if you bought it from me, we stand behind it.